no matter the cold, wind, heat, or rain, our pious town still stands outside to worship the bright new moon God sends us every month. <laughs> oh, yeah. Things have been getting worse and worse. We're all so poor, never enough food or firewood. I must think of something soon. Aha! I've got it! Oh. Hell Knights were saved! Ha! Take heed and comfort, for we will capture the moon! Capture the moon? Yes, yes, capture the moon! You know that, like us, all good Jews must come to worship the new moon each month. So here's what we'll do. We're going to take down the moon and, and wrap it carefully and then hide it in our synagogue. Then all the Jews from all over the world will have to come to us to pray. And by charging them a small fee, nothing excessive of course, we'll become the richest town in the world! We have a wizard amongst us! We'll roll in riches! <laughs> I'm not finished yet! Once we've captured the moon, We'll wash it and clean it of all its stains, so it'll shine brighter and clearer. Then we'll scrub it and polish it and, and rent it out to all the big cities. Instead of using lanterns to light their streets at night, they can put up one bright, clean, well-washed moon. That'll save them lots of money, and we'll amass a fortune. We are saved. Oh, Lord, we thank you for Gimple's great wisdom. He truly is the leading citizen of hell. <laughs> How will we get a hold of the moon? Now look up! Ah. 
Back down again! Oh! Oh! Moon! Oh! I see the moon! The same moon that is in the sky is here in the borscht! Huh? Quick! Grab the rope, the sealing wax, and the sack, oh, and the moon will be ours! <laughs> now let's hide it safely in the synagogue and reveal it on the first dark night. Tonight is the night we reveal our moon. <laughs> Let there be light. It's gone. Where is it? Did it shrink? Why would it leave us? Oh. Move over. The moon might be stuck on a nail or something. Oh. Oh. Helmites, look. There was a hole in the barrel! The moon must have melted out with the borscht! Oh, Look, it's all over the street there! Oh, there! Oh, there! the same moon that we captured, Brother Barrel. Every month, there is a new moon. Until now, you have heard about the Chalmites who are poor, who hope for the extra scrap of bread. People like the goat herd, who slaved day and night to feed his wife and children, or the cobbler who could barely afford to shoe the twelve feet of his family. <laughs> the dairyman, who had milk for his household, but never cream. The finest leather was never worn by the tanners. The best fish of Gimple's fish shop never graced his mouth or the mouth of his wife and children. Even Zytel the butcher never tasted the most reserved cuts. All these, the finest shoes, leather, fish, and meat went to the hill and those who lived there. The hill was one shoulder of the mountain which created town's wealthiest neighborhood. This is where Rev. Fischel and his wife, Mendeleev, lived, in a house overlooking town. His prosperity came from his lumber mill. His lumber was shipped by ox cart and barge to cities where people could afford such things. Not that the poor didn't want to be rich, of course, but when you're poor and your neighbors are poor, being poor seems natural. There's no disgrace in being poor, which is the only good thing you can say about it. And, and then, then came the rain. It's so 
the village for a week. Walking became torturous for adults and hazardous for children and animals. The streets ran with mud. But the hill went untroubled by the rain. They expected Herschel the wood carrier to bring them wood for their fireplaces and Naftali the water carrier to bring them water. They sent maids into town to shop for food for their tables. They stayed indoors, never contending with the mud. And then and came the hail. Hail the size of acorns! The size of plums! Oh, the mud froze over, making walking treacherous! Elders were afraid their, their heads or their roofs would be caved in. They only went out when it was urgent to do so. But the hill never had to worry about their roofs caving in. They stayed indoors, dry, warm, and safe. And then the snow fell. It fell gently at first. The Helmites comforted each other, telling one another stories about the snow in Helm from years past. According to one story, so much snow fell in Helm that the townspeople complained to the elders. My, 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 I can't, I can't walk in the streets. I can't walk in the streets. And, 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 and at last, they reached a resolution to ban all snow from Helm. <gasps> to enforce the ban, they formed snow brigades. The people of Helm, armed with shovels and with pails, passed the packed snow hand to hand from the town center to the last person in line who would throw the snow over the wall and out of Helm. This work went on until May and suddenly Helm was snow free. Another old chestnut was about a snowfall that created a beautiful, breathtaking scene. No one was crass enough to dare disturb such natural elegance. There must be justice in the world, even if it isn't here. Yes, that's it! We can do our share of help. If, if there is justice in the world, we will... We will buy some for him! <laughs> Perhaps in Lvov. There is nothing like the hill there. In Lvov, rich and poor live on the same level. Let us send two to Lvov to buy justice for Helm. All in favor? Maskinim! It was agreed unanimously. Now the town elders simply had to work out the preparations. Would justice be light or heavy? Could it be carried by hand or in a satchel? Hmm. Best to send two chalmites and a donkey cart, just to be safe. Ansel, the tailor's son, was chosen for his youth and strength. Ansel 
The tensmith was chosen for his age and wisdom. Goodbye, Helm. We will return with a cart full of justice. Ansel and Anshul rode the donkey cart all the way to the ball. They spent hours asking, pleading with the people of Lvov to help them locate justice. It was then that they finally found their luck. Excuse me, brother. We heard that you were um, seeking justice. Most assuredly. You see that donkey cart? <laughs> we brought it to bring justice back to hell. How fortuitous. We happen to have a whole warehouse full of justice, just a short distance from here. Please take us there! <laughs> the fact is, we have more justice than we can use. These days, people are more often seeking advantage instead of justice. So we're loaded with justice. Indeed we are. of justice. Top to bottom, wall to wall. So many barrels. I've never seen so much justice in one place. How much justice can you afford? We only sell it by the barrel. We have 10 gold coins. We could have 15 gold coins, but only if it will give us a full battle. Yeah, that might work. We have 20 gold coins and not a farthing more. My good man, do not worry. Do we look like cats? We would never take your last coin. We can give you an entire barrel of justice for only 19 coins! <laughs> As the trio, Ansel, Anshul, and the donkey, approached Helm, the townsfolk gathered. Poor and rich alike were anxious to see justice with their own eyes. Sweet as plum pudding. 
Since we are wiser, we must devise our own justice. This is what I propose. From now on, whenever an animal is slaughtered, let every cut of meat be the choicest cut. From now on, let there be no difference between sackcloth and lace, silk and cotton. From now on, let every seat in the synagogue be equally near the holy ark. And one thing more. If the rich are foolish enough to pay a premium for seats that were formerly near the holy ark, then let them. If the rich insist on paying more for what used to be the finest silk, then let them. Let them. If they insist on paying more for what was formerly the choicest cuts of meat, then let them. Let them. Wisdom is what sets apart a true helmet. All in favor? Not <laughs> Forbearance returned to Helm after that, and spring was in the air. The streets dried and the mud abated. The rich still lived on the hill and pretended nothing had changed, but the poor knew better. They might still be poor, but now they knew they were equal to the rich. <laughs> they ate the finest cuts of meat, wore the best clothes, and sat in the best seats in the synagogue. No matter what they ate, no matter what they wore, no, no matter, matter where they, they sat. <laughs>